Hello friend, welcome again and today we will discuss a very special topic in railways and that is funicular railway. A funicular railway is sometimes also called an inclined plane or cliff railway. But these are not same. The only similarity in these three types of railway is that they normally solve the problem of transporting people up extremely stops, steep slopes. A funicular railway is distinguished from the similar inclined elevator in that it has two vehicles that counterbalance one another rather than independently operated cars. And this is a type of cable railway system that connects points along a railway track laid on a steep slope. And this slope can be very steep, even sometimes more than 60 degree also. The funicular railway has two counterbalanced cars or trains, which are permanently attached to opposite ends of a haulage cable, which is looped over a pulley at upper end of the track. Now you can understand this by this figure. This is a pulley here which is placed at the upper end of the track and here is a car and there is another car here. So when this car goes up, this car will come down and when this car goes up, then this car will come down. That is the basic concept of a funicular railway. Two carriages move synchronously as one ascends, the other descends at an equal speed. This railway uses the kinetic energy of descending car to raise the ascending car in a manner similar to an elevator. The funicular railways range from short urban lines to significant multi-section mountain railways. The funicular railway works in combination with wheeled car and tracks to allow for long routes and safe ride. It is a sustainable method of transport as no fuel is consumed. The key to energy efficiency here is that this system uses the second car as a counterweight. You know, conventional trains using steel wheels on a steel track could never efficiently climb a track as steep as most funicular railways. Steel wheels are used to decrease rolling resistance, which improves the efficiency of train on flat ground, but would hinder their ability to get traction going up steep slope. And if you watch my video on gradients in railway, then any gradient which is steeper than rolling gradient will require additional engine and that we call the push, pusher gradient or helper gradient. So in a normal track, the slope is steeper than ruling gradient. Whenever you have slope steeper than ruling gradient, the hauling becomes very difficult and energy extensive. Funicular railways in general solve this problem by pulling trains up steep rate with a cable. Now, this is a funicular railway, you can say, at a very steep slope and there are two parallel tracks. And in these two parallel tracks, there is a cable, which basically pulls this train up and this goes down. Now, this can be a three rail system also like this or can be a single track. Now, in this case, the incline has two cars that ride on the same single line or can say single mile long track. When the cars come close together, the track splits into two as a passing loop for both cars to pass one another. This single track passing loop system is used in funicular railway across the world. You can see animation here. This is the steel cable and this angle of the track is 30 degree, let us say, and this is one car, this is another car. When this goes up, it goes down, and when this goes up, this car will come down. 
they are both attached with the cable now this is a single track funicular railway system and here you have the loop now beyond this loop there is a single line and this side also there will be a single line and this loop here is to allow these two cars to pass when they cross each other many early funiculars were built using water tanks under the floor of each car and these water tanks were filled or emptied until just sufficient imbalance was achieved to allow movement and a few such funiculars still exist and operate in the same way the car at the top of the hill is loaded with the water until it is heavier than the car at the bottom and it causes to descend the hill and pull up the other car the water is drained at the bottom and the process repeats with the cars exchanging the rolls so that was the early development now the car itself is taken as the counterweight on a basic level the funicular can be described as a hybrid of technologies behind elevators and trains although it predated both of these the typical modern construction involves two cargo or passenger cars attached by a cable around a pulley running along a track the funicular runs because cars act as counterweight for each other a system also employed by elevators this is supplemented by hydraulic system or an electric motor to overcome the friction losses in the system and the variable weights of the car this is a two railed railway in switzerland and you can see here as i explained to you earlier this is a single track this side and a single track this side and this is the loop where two cars can cross each other there are over 40 funicular railways in the united kingdom dated back to the 19th century many of them is still in operation and open to the public this is a fourth street elevator in iowa and you can just see the slope now here also the principle is same that you have two cars and these two car cross here at the loop joginder nagar in himachal pradesh is having india's highest funicular railway at 2530 meter above sea mean sea level it was built in 1930 to carry heavy machinery of shanan power house to badoth it is a meter gauge line it has it is a four stage network of funicular and horizontal track and has six haulage car stations and the loading capacity of haulage way cars are 15 10 and 5 tons naturally higher the capacity lower will be the speed and there are in addition to that there are funicular railways in maharashtra also and in tamil nadu also so that is the concept of funicular railway thank you very much for watching this video if you have any doubt any questions you can write in the comment box